Hey everyone, I'm Bert from Immature Stoners, and this is Dabbing with Washington Artists. Come and get stoned with us as we sit down and smoke with your favorite local artists. Hey, my name is Ash Hagland. Oh, and this is where I talk about what I do? Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> Well, we can start over. Oh, no, yeah, this, yeah. let's just keep going. I mean, we're in it. So um, I am a collage artist in Seattle, and uh, I've got a, a big, oh, I don't know, I guess I would call it like a, a femme vein throughout the body of my work. Real big on feminine and stuff. Oh, my God, this is tough. <laughs> How are you supposed to talk about yourself when you're this ripped, man? Like, all the thoughts are like, let's just, oop, squirrel. And then the other day I, shiny. <laughs> For today's series of dabs, we will begin our smoke session with a snow leopard, a peaches and cream, and an L.A. Kush cake. And we'll round out the session with a Kush mince, a melonade, and an O.G. chem. Hey everyone, I'm Bert with Immature Stoners, and this is Dabbing with Washington Artists. And today we are joined by Ash Hagland. Hi. Um, hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, thank you for uh, taking the drive up here. Um, Definitely. And uh, hopefully you're ready to get stoned. <laughs> yeah, born ready, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do this. We're going to start out today with some Snow Leopard. Snow Leopard is an indica dominant hybrid and is a notorious creeper strain with a robust terpene profile of spice and earthiness and is known for its tendency to leave the smoker feeling detached and with a floating effect. We picked up a gram of this sauce at a shop on Center Ave in Tacoma. And then you put it there. There you are. Perfect. Okay. All right. So the first thing we'd like to ask everyone on our show, um, what role does cannabis play in your creative process? Well, uh, so, you know, it used to be, it before, let's say before 2020, um, I, I was a makeup artist and so I never did anything with cannabis at all before I'd show up to work. But then, you know, when I switched gears, left that industry and started um, my collage, I noticed that it was harder for me to gain inspiration when I was of sober mind. And it's mostly because I was recently diagnosed with ADHD and I met, you know, spent my whole life not understanding that. Mm -hmm. And so I realized that as I was starting these projects, sometimes I would just sit there and I would have, I'd stare at like this blank canvas and there would just be a, a storm of thoughts like tornadoing around my brain. Yep. And so now, even if I smoke a sativa, which is more active, obviously, sure. but even when I smoke a sativa, it just takes like one or two hits and I can just zero in and mm -hmm. all of a sudden it's like reaching up in that tornado cloud and just like picking one word out of it. And I actually, there. see, I tend to use that same, almost same analogy really? where it's just a cloud of thoughts and yeah. you're able to actually reach out and grab one finally. Totally. And like, yeah. Yeah. Um, that was the other thing too, is I know a lot of uh, women haven't been diagnosed with ADHD because it was generally considered to be a boy's disease yes you know? yeah or right. boy's condition i shouldn't say disease i'm sorry correct myself on a, that disease. a disease how oh, dare you oh no uh, <laughs> but yeah a, a boy's condition and i imagine a lot of women went untreated you yeah know? yep and it's interesting too because apparently women present differently than than men do mm -hmm. with adhd i don't want to call them like symptoms but i guess are tells yeah and uh and for me, it was a lot of, I realized that it had a lot to do with like my procrastination and mm -hmm. not, not that I didn't want to do something, but that that same like thought tornado, I would just be having all of these ideas or all of these pressures swimming around in my head and I couldn't bring myself to focus to actually start the project. Right. And it wasn't until, I mean, I'm, I'm going to out myself here, but I'm 36, so it's, I'm older, <laughs> slightly. Rap, cool. Slightly, I'm slightly. still the baby here. <laughs> slightly, probably only by months. <laughs> yeah, probably. And uh, and you know, it's a late in life diagnosis, but it's like as soon as that happened, um, everything made sense. And mm -hmm. then and then I started understanding how cannabis can affect my artistic process. Absolutely. You know, it became something where I was like, well, I'll just. This is like a tool a tool for focus mm -hmm. instead of me just wanting to feel stoned while I do art. So for our second one today, I think you'll like this one. This one just smells and tastes really good. Uh, we got some peaches and cream. Ooh. Yeah. I love a good, like, candy weed. Mm-hmm. Oh, stop. This smells like a... It smells like a like a candy as a kid. You remember those little gummy the peach, peach rings? rings? Yes! I, I, I was, gonna, I was oh. waiting for that because I was, knew that was coming. 
Because <laughs> everybody says the exact same really? thing. Really? Yes. Okay, everybody well. says it distinctly smells and tastes like that, those orange rings. Oh, my God. <laughs> and it tastes just <laughs> like that. So That's yeah. amazing. And that makes me very excited. Peaches and Cream is a terpene-infused hybrid with a rich, creamy terpene profile, and it's known for its relaxing high that won't leave the smoker feeling incapacitated. We picked up a gram of this terp sauce at a shop on Center Ave in Tacoma. There's going. It does the same kind of thing with like the there's like the vape pen sometimes where it gets a little cloudy. Yeah, and then you hear it snap. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, then it all releases and you yeah. get that shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So the next thing we like to ask everyone, um, how has living in Washington influenced your uh, artistic process ah, or your creativity? That's an interesting question. Um, I've lived in Washington, Seattle specifically, for since 2010, but I took a year I took a year off of Seattle because I moved to New York for my okay. makeup artist career. Yes. Um, it was like one of those bucket list items where I realized, oh my God, if I don't do this now, I will never do it. And then I will regret it because I'll have to live with a what if. And um, so I guess that would be uh, t uh, 12 years, math, 12 years. <laughs> um, it's interesting. You know, I would say it took me, it took me, honestly, until I moved back to Seattle from New York for me to really feel like, Seattle was home. I'm originally okay. from Southern California. Okay. So, you know, when I first moved here, I was only, in my mind, I was only going to be here for a year. It was just like an exploratory phase, like, let's live somewhere else for once in your life. And um, and then I just didn't feel like you could really know enough about a place in a year. So I stayed. And every year, I was just like, okay, well, maybe, maybe someday I'll move somewhere else. Maybe somewhere, maybe one day I'll move you know, back to LA, or maybe I'll go to New York one day. And then when I did go to New York, um, it was actually the first time where I felt connected to Washington. Mm. So when I, every time I would come home, it's so interesting, every time I would come home, which was every like, maybe like once or twice a quarter max, um, I'd get home and I would start to feel like myself again. I would feel more artistic, more creative, more relaxed when I came home. Interesting. Because the juxtaposition between those two cities, if, you know, if anyone listening has ever lived in New York, they get it. Like, you have to wake up every day and convince yourself, one more day. I'm going to live in New York for one more day. It's <laughs> oh, just, no. a, you know, it's just a tough place to live. Yeah, I'm You know, sure. unless you come from a shit ton of money or have this wildly high paying job, you just struggle. It's just part of being a New Yorker. Right. And so when I moved back to Seattle, uh, that was late 2019, um, I, I started to feel like I was actually connected to this place. My soul felt like I was connected to Seattle for the first time. Um, I don't know, it, it was like a, it was a huge shift. And since then, I've, you know, I've, Right after I moved back, we got in, we got ourselves into a little pandemic, <laughs> and so that I mean honestly that a just little yeah a little pandemic a little panini as some yeah. people call it. <laughs> so I mean that'll just suck the creativity out of anyone, right? For at least that first year while we were all trying to figure out what the fuck was. I happening. feel like afterwards though it sparked like a kind of like yes. this surge in creativity. Yes, and. I actually couldn't have said that better because once things started to lift, I felt like I had left this very creative industry behind mm -hmm. and I completely switched gears um, to my full-time job as a real estate agent, but nice. which is not a creative industry. I mean, it, it's got creative elements about it. You can make it creative, but it's not creative. Right. Not like what I had. And so I had all of this pent up energy and I had to put it into something. And I had, you know, in my fashion career, I had a huge stack of old fashion magazines um, and just started making these clips of things and rearranging them. And that's when I started to discover that uh, I, I would start posting them on Facebook. Mm -hmm. as like a, well, fuck, let's just 
let's just put this out in the world. You know, we're at a time the art, the the world needs more art. There's a lot of shit going on. Yeah. Um, everyone's feeds are full of bullshit politics, and no one can agree, and everyone's angry. So, and no one's posting pictures of food and babies anymore. <laughs> So let's get back to things that make people happy. And so I started posting my art on Facebook and I realized um, as people were positively responding to it, holy shit, there's like a whole community of other artists. And so I, you know, obviously scrolling through Instagram, I'm finding all of these other collage artist accounts mm -hmm. and I'm feeling super inspired by them. And then I'm seeing um, there's a, an Instagram account called um, PNW Collage Collective, Pacific Northwest Collage Collective. And that community in and of itself, while tiny, has a huge impact on like the global collage community. That's cool. And I realized that, you know, when I'm feeling grounded and connected to this place, it, it like opened up this space <clears throat> for me to feel um, able, I guess, to really grasp where I live and who I am and this exploratory phase that I was in. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, I would just say it really when it comes down to it, I think it's I think it's everything that is Seattle. Like you I'll say this. A lot of people talk a lot of shit about shit happening in Seattle, and I get it. I get it. We all see it every day. And it takes living somewhere else that's really intense to understand how great Seattle actually is. Like, yeah, yeah, I can get that. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Like quality of life here is incredible. The people are amazing. The artist community that we have here, albeit smaller than other places, right? It's tight knit and it doesn't feel maliciously competitive like it does in other cities. I always get that feeling too. Like they're, everybody's trying to more uplift each other rather than fight for attention. 100%. It just yeah. feels like everyone here wants everyone to succeed. And honestly, I think that's a better model of doing it because everybody wins in that in that fact. You know, like, yeah. yeah, if artists are going, check out this other guy. He does this amazing, or this other woman. She does amazing stuff here, you know. Yeah. Then they're all getting views. Everybody's going to be cross, you know. Totally. You know? Yeah. Totally. You know? Yeah. There's, um, there's an artist. Um, I don't know if you've heard of her. I actually don't know her real name. Um because I've never asked her, but she goes by Girl Spit. Do you know who this is? Mm -mm. Holy shit. She is one of the most rad artists and she's so incredible and so sweet and grounded, but she, um, yeah, you have to check out Girl Spit, but she, she had this call out for like um, people who want to do to do like big paste up murals. Oh yeah. And I just got in touch with her. I shot her a, a message on Instagram, and I was like, "Uh, so I've never done this before. I have no experience in this, but if you need like volunteer help for people to just like dip those brooms and buckets and paste this shit up, like I'm your girl. I'm a fast learner. I'll totally do it." And she was like, "Oh my god." fuck yeah, I would love to have you do this. I'll totally teach you how to do it. Doesn't matter that you don't have experience. We'd love your help. And I'm like, that would never happen in LA or New York. You know what I mean? It just, Absolutely. Not unless you're like, hey, I'm a friend of a friend or I'm also a famous artist. Let's collaborate. Right, right. You know? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> our art community here is badass. <laughs> Uh, all right, sorry. Um, so on for our third dab here, we have some L.A. Kush Cake. L.A. Kush Cake is an indica-leaning hybrid with a subtle earthy and minty terpene profile and is known for its creeper effect that tends to leave the smoker feeling couch-locked. We found a gram of these sugar diamonds at a shop on Center Ave in Tacoma. said I, I'm not coughing. That's crazy. Here we go. It can trick you, though. <coughs> God it doesn't damn. feel as hot. <laughs> it doesn't. My lungs don't feel like they're on fire. Okay. So um, when working with your collages, uh, what are some of the difficulties um, that you might not experience in other mediums? Composition is one. You know, when you're working with collage, you know, depending on, I should say, depending on where you're getting your source material from. If it's magazines, for example... Um, the scale of your piece can be limited. Okay. Um, because, you know, let's say you want to do something really intense where there's a larger body in mm -hmm. the foreground, and then you want something cool and, like, maybe spacey for something in the background. Um, you know, you... 
on a an image on a paper page can only be so large, right? right. So so it's interesting. Sometimes you're limited by the scale of things, um, but also. Oh shit, I just lost my train of thought. I had like this really great like aha moment in the middle of that. Um, um, oh, here's one. Um, you know, it shouldn't be controversial that collage is a legitimate form of art, but it is. Um, there, are, there are a lot of artists who maybe have been trained in like, you know, the classical way of painting. Um, even even people who um, you know do these beautiful artworks that with something very easy you know much easier to use like acrylic, um, you know those people painting is always considered art. Um, you know sculptures are considered art. Pottery is considered art. I mean if you think about it, everything is art. Yeah. But collage, you know, people look at it and they're like, oh, all you're doing is cutting and pasting shit on paper, when it can actually become really you know a lot more complex than that. Sure. So I would say um, you know the debate over whether or not collage artists are legit artists is a limitation. Well, I mean if you translate that to like say music, if you got like these EDM artists that use samples. And yes. Shit, it's. You know, it's still music. The music's in your head. Yeah. Are you, you know? bopping to it? And so it's imagine music. it's the same with, with any collage picture. The image you want is there in your head. And yeah. You've got to figure out how to make it work. And you know what's interesting, too, is that, like, in the process of creating collage, a lot of people will do it differently. Some people are um, intuitive with their process. So they'll just start to see things and clip them and, um, you know, just start laying them out. They glue it. They find another one. They lay it down. They glue it. And so it evolves as they're seeing new images pop up from mm -hmm. magazines, um, which is really interesting. But then there's another, you know, some people like me, sometimes I'll, I'll find this one image that really inspires me and I'll try to create an entire piece around that image. But I'm also limited by the source material that I have available. So sure. if I'm thinking, oh, I want this to go in a spacey vibe, but all I have are pictures of like trees you know, it's not quite going to do it for me. Um, right. And then a lot of times I'll start doing something in a layout and I lose my inspiration right in the middle of it and I hate it. And so I scrap everything and start all over again um, with, I mean, I'm, I'm not a great painter, but sometimes I do. Um, sometimes when I'm just painting for the hell of it, um, I get started and I can walk away a million different times, but still always come back to it because mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's now permanent on there. Sure. I've committed to this canvas, so I'm going to finish it. Um, with collage, a lot of times I'll have, you know, a hundred million ideas that I want to do and I'll start them all and mm -hmm. scrap all of them before they become permanent. All right. So for our fourth dab, we're halfway point here. Uh, how are you feeling so far? I'm like buzzing, but cloud-like. There you go. You know? uh, I know you said you uh, don't usually dab. so No, uh, not usually. So that's good. You're doing great so far. Thanks. So we have some Kush Mints. Uh, I'm going for this one here. Kush Mints is a well-balanced hybrid with a robust terpene profile, a sharp mint, and earthy coffee. We picked up a gram of this wax at a shop on Bothell Everett Highway in Bothell. So many of your pieces are designed to trick the eye into seeing dimension that doesn't exist on a 2D plane. What are the challenges in creating this dimensionality in a collage piece? Well, I mean, it is two dimensional. So, although there is ways around that in collage. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes um, I've got this one piece that I created. Um, it's on my website, it's on my Instagram and it's called uh, On Exhibit. Okay. And um, it's actually a smaller piece. Uh, I, I had it in an art show recently and it sold, which felt really good. Nice. Um, but it's basically, um, it's uh, an old vintage photo of uh, New York, like a, a theater in, mm -hmm. in downtown Manhattan um, in the background. And then what looks like um, a man, a human man, standing and gazing up at this window that has super bright lighting, like a, <laughs> like, like the inside of a, a car, a car lot, you know, their inside buildings always have those blinding white lights. Yeah. Like that, except instead of vehicles, it's women's faces. Okay. Um, and so there's a, there's a lot of meaning behind that one, but um, that one was really challenging when I was putting it together. It needed depth. 
-hmm. And it wasn't enough to just have, you know, flat paper on flat paper on flat paper. It needed to look, it needed to look more realistic. And I just wasn't getting there with that. So there's this like real sticky um, uh, mounting tape like you would use for a photograph. Okay. Um, and they're really, really thin, but I stacked a couple of those and was able to create like an depth with actual shadow. So it's still collage. I'm just treating a little bit with you know, perspective. Effecting. Yeah, 3D affecting. And, uh, and then, um, and that really helped, but then really to top that one all off, I took a piece of um, cellophane and cut out the, what was glass, like a picture of glass windows and put cellophane behind it. So, and then it's framed in a shadow <laughs> so box. So it actually kind of has a shine to it. Yeah, totally. And uh, actually, it's so cute. My mom bought that piece. Oh. <laughs> She's such a great supporter. I fucking love my mom. She's the shit. And she, yeah, she actually bought that piece at the show. And I was like, mom, if you loved it that much, I totally would have given it to you. And she's like, no, no, absolutely not. Ashley Danielle, she would say. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, I would say there's, you know, there's ways around it. But, uh, you know, I think anything that, you know, could be considered um, a, a challenge is also just m more of like a, uh, it's a chance to go down a different path. It's a chance for exploration. So it's a blessing and a curse, those limitations. Um, you have them and it causes you to find a, a different route around it. Right. Yeah. That's awesome. So our number five, we have some Melanade. Melanade is a sativa dominant strain with an intense terpene profile of citrus and honeydew melon and is known for its cerebral high and tendency to leave the smoker feeling chatty and social. We picked up a gram of these sugar diamonds at a shop on Seattle Soto District. So as you mentioned before, uh, you have some experience working in the fashion industry and mm -hmm. the makeup industry as well, um, which comes through in your art for sure. Uh, what elements of your time there are being showcased in your recent Mirage City collection? Oh, yeah. So um, so Mirage City is actually, uh, that was inspired by my time in New York. Um, it was really interesting. Um, it's, it's, it's a very unique city and wonderful for that reason, you know, in and of itself. There's, it's got a lot of problems, but so does everywhere else. Um, and, uh, and I just remember, you know, there's that, that old adage, like, if you can make it in New York, you can make it anywhere. Sure. But it's such an, like, a damn near unattainable um goal i guess or like a it's a it's an unrealistic expectation to put sure. on yourself let alone to have anyone else put on you right and so me trying to um uh, i guess just like push beyond the um limitations that society puts on us mm -hmm. as far as you know what we can and can't do and and who can do what um I'm trying to like break those break down those barriers within myself as well. Okay. And so when I left when I left New York, I really wrestled with um you know, will I continue in this industry? Because at that point I knew I just didn't need I just couldn't live in New York anymore. I was mm -hmm. just I was just done. Um I was ready to move home, but I it hadn't sunken in yet that I was leaving New York because I was also done with that career. I was just ready to retire you know for right. and for all the right reasons I was just like it's not making my soul happy anymore you know Absolutely. and I had an amazing run too like I got to do everything that I really wanted to do which is amazing you know even even like small tangible ways I was like oh yeah that fits in that category fuck yeah checklist <laughs> and um you know so that Mirage City collection is sort of like a it's almost like a like a, a an act of obstinance almost to that lie that people tell you when it comes to New York where like um you know you're not good enough if you didn't make it there or you know you failed if you left and all of these things sure. you know you're you're still great at what you do um you know it doesn't make you any less of a person you're still valuable as a human being it doesn't you know it doesn't mean that you've you failed at even that profession yeah um i think it's amazing that people even try it's i think it's a lot of told, people at the time told me that I was brave for just packing up and moving. And, you know, my partner stayed behind. So we did a long distance oh, wow. okay. for uh, that whole year. It was so hard. But, um, you know, there's a lot of people that were like, oh, you're so brave for what you're doing. 
And at the time I was like, nah, it doesn't feel like an act of bravery. But now looking back on it, I was like, holy fuck. I, I, yeah, really a lot I had to adjust for that to happen. Yeah, so absolutely. it's brave. And, um, anyway, when I, when I got back, it took me a while to sort of wrestle with, um, what that experience and that place meant for me and, and what it would mean about me and my identity, right. As right. just like what I do and who I am in the world moving forward. Um, I started having to, to switch my mindset and tell myself you didn't, you know, you didn't fail because you didn't stay. Sure. Um, and that I think really comes through in that art. There's, um, this one piece, uh, uh, ghosts in the machine mm -hmm. and it's the city skyline, sort of like a, not quite from an aerial view, but from a, a higher up point of view and these dress silhouettes, um, of models posing mm -hmm. and, uh, it's so interesting when I was there, I, I saw so many new faces. I almost never worked with the same people twice. That's crazy. Um, and yeah, in a year there, like, uh, and, unless I was like assisting another, like a veteran artist right. um, on a, on a really big job, um, then I would see that artist all the time, but rarely would see the same models twice. And I just realized how many people are, you know, going through those revolving doors, right? How sure. many cogs are in that machine? Right. Right. Um, and, you know, it's easy to forget a face once they leave or once they start doing something else or when they get lost in that sea of people. So that to me was just like, I just see these, um, this like haunting image of these faceless models who are indeed present there. You can see their bodies, but where's the sure. face? Um, <laughs> all right. So our, our number six today, we have some oh, we OG. we made it to six? We are on number six. Dope. And we got some OG Kim. OG Chem is a sativa-leaning hybrid with a distinct aroma and taste of bitter diesel fuel and is known for its tendency to leave the smoker feeling uplifted and chatty. We scored a gram of these saucy diamonds at a shop in Capitol Hill. Perfect. <laughs> So as we kind of uh, are aware, the fashion world is known for its kind of boy club culture. Totally. Um, do you see this phenomena in the same way in the art community? And if so, uh, what changes do you hope to impart with your work? Um, you know, specific to the Washington, you know, Seattle art community, I don't feel that way. Okay. Um, which is actually a really nice realization to have. Um, you know, the art world in general is still a boys club. Um, uh, actually I read something the other day that, um, I forget who can legitimize this statement. So disclaimer, I don't know why I, this statement could be valid. I can't have you fact check it. I can't even do it. But it was said, um, that, uh, um, experts who deal in like art investments are saying that the, the, like a more secure future investment or like ROI is in female artists right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, so apparently money well spent on on a female artist right now. And that's like globally. Just in case y'all are looking to have invest. You know, like, hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Like, I'm not one for subtleties, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I don't really get that feeling, though, so much in, um, in Seattle. Like, there's, you know, there's meetups all over the city. There's, like, tons of them in, like, Belltown mm -hmm. and Pioneer Square and all that. Um, big artist communities that are focusing their efforts downtown. And um, when you see like the event photos, there's definitely dudes there, but there's so many women. And I think it's getting better. And I think there's more um, female artists that are getting recognized. Um, I mentioned Girl Spit earlier, like she's seriously one of the check dopest. That out. Yeah. Oh my God. I, I can't even ruin it for you about what it is. I just need you we'll to look, go we'll find it. it. We'll yeah. look it up. And uh, Instagram, best place? Girl spit, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. We'll check it out. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I just think that, you know, times they are a-changing. <laughs> That's good, though. I mean, it, it, art should be an everybody thing, you know? Yeah, yeah, and it is. And, you know, it knows no gender identity. There's, you know, art is as fluid as everything else is in the world. Absolutely. You know? 
Well, awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah. Um, I hope you had some fun. I did. I did. Excellent. Well, thank you guys for joining us today. Make sure you click like, subscribe, share with friends, and uh, yeah, check out her stuff. It's cool.